I know I'm using physics terms, but can everybody understand where I'm going or how I'm going? Okay, so that, like, what I'm saying is that if an atom can be divided and divided and divided and divided into infinity, now you're really not dealing with just an atom, but you're dealing with something that would be more akin to a black hole. Right? Because it's got infinite density. It's like a mini black hole. A teeny weeny mini black hole we call an atom. Right? And it just happens that there's all sorts of reasons why that may be true. Like one of them being that the electron cloud spin at near the speed of light, so you'd expect that in the vicinity of a black hole. Um, the other one is that the the fundamental force that holds the atom together, which is thought to be the strong force. Uh, in the case of an atom being a mini black hole, just happens to be gravity. If you, if you change the concept of an atom from what it was to an atom being a mini black hole, all of a sudden your calculation says that what holds the atom together is gravity, not some weird strong force that we invented. So that's, you know, all different. But, and that changes physics fundamentally. But, but just sit with this for a minute. You're made of billions and billions of mini, teeny, weeny black holes. All right. And they're constantly, through the electron cloud, right, moving information in and out. They're constantly sending information to the vacuum and sending it back out and sending it back in and sending it back out. And that feedback of creation is what we call reality. When the vacuum expand, we see it. When the vacuum expand, we see it. We see the radiation of it. When it contracts, when the information is going in, we don't. We call it the vacuum. And in terms of, uh, in terms of physics, we call it gravity. Uh, so that, you know, according to my theory. Right? So now you have a whole relationship between the radiative side, the electromagnetic field, and the gravitation component. You have this feedback of information, and feedbacks undergo very specific geometric functions in order to be able to do that. And so that's how I figured out that feedback early, and I started to look to the geometry that would allow that to happen. Because I was looking, I was looking for that key, man. Because like, you know, I don't like being stuck to this planet. I don't know. So uh, I was, you know, we'll just jump ahead here, and actually, it's the next slide. So now uh, it's long after these thoughts when I was younger, uh, and you know, I've done a lot of physics by then, and uh, at the time, my uh, sponsors and my supporter, um, I think one, some of you might know uh, Foster Gamble, uh, and he uh, thought I needed to like get out there, and he was really encouraging me and supporting me in like going and meeting with the mainstream physicists, and you know, and as well, you know, to see uh, how my theories would like match up and hold up. And so uh, we, I, I go to Georgia Tech and, uh, and we're meeting with uh, the head of the Department of Physics there and other physicists and um, mathematicians and uh, they're talking about string theory and all this and then I presented. And uh, you know there was a certain amount of irritation with those other guys about me because you know, I don't necessarily have, um, you know, I don't have a PhD in physics and so on, and uh, I, I done a lot of physics, and, and, and many of them consider that I should have a PhD in physics, but, um, but still, you know, and I'm asking really kind of basic questions all the time, and you know, they're talking string theory, 11 dimensions, and that, and that, and super string strings, and you know, they're like, way out there and I'm like, well, what about this? You know? And they're like, you know, and the students there, you could see they're getting upset too and all this, but at one point, you know, I basically pulled out this book, Gravitation, it's kind of the Bible of Relativistic Equation, like uh, Thorn, Wheeler, and, and Mesner wrote this book and it, it's really kind of used everywhere and 
in, when you're talking about a relativistic equation, this is kind of the reference. And I pull it out, and it's called gravitation, mostly because you see it's really thick, so if you try to lift it up, you get gravitation, and you know, you get the idea right away. And uh, I pulled it out, and I, I open it uh, to page um, 719, and, you know, basically after a few hundred equations, you get to this point, and this tells you the fundamental concepts of our universe right now is some kind of balloon that, uh, like, uh, as an analogy, is a, is a balloon with, with pennies glued to it. And the pennies represents galaxies. And as the balloon gets blown up, um, the galaxies move away from each other. It's the expansion of the universe and the elasticity of the universe and all this is described in Einstein field equations and all this stuff in space-time. And so I'm, I open it to that page and I'm like, okay, so if I understand, well, this is our concept of the universe right now, and they're all looking at me going, oh my God, I get, you know, yes, Nassim, this is what we, you know, and I, we've got equations and stuff, and I'm like, okay, what I want to know is where in here, where in the equations is it that it says, who's this guy? <laughs> uh, because, like, I haven't seen it anywhere. You guys don't even talk about it in your analogy here. And I want to know what's happening with this guy. And, and they looked at me, and there was a long silence, you know. And I could see there was a little sweat beating on some foreheads. And, you know, I was like, well, because, the, you know, and then I, I thought, oh, maybe they're going to think I'm going to start talking about God, you know, at Georgia Tech. That would be like, oh, my God, you can't do that at the physics <laughs> department at Georgia Tech. I was like, I reassured them. Uh, I said, you know, um, because, you know, in order for the balloon to expand, right, so, so I started to draw the rest of the guy. You know? And so you see, when the balloon expands, right, the lungs in the guy has to contract. Right? You can't get, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction at, you know, fundamental law of physics, remember that one? And um, that, you know, and, and then the room got really silent. <laughs> and I was basically saying to them, there must be a balance between the expansion and the contraction between what goes out and what comes in, and the information must be going in the feedback relative to that dynamic. I mean, you can apply that to your life right now. I mean, you are expanding energy right now, You thermodynamically even, you know, you're expanding heat. and. Um, you got to eat, you got to put stuff in for that to happen, right? Even in terms of your senses, you expand energy so that your sense works, so that when you touch something, so that you can see something, you can smell something, you can taste something. And those things are going from the outside in. And you, those things are going in and you interpret them, and then based on that interpretation, you act outside. Right? So it's that feedback, that relationship between the out and the in, and the out and the in. And actually, the separation on this planet is that some people say it's all in, and some people say it's all out. <laughs> right? The, the, the spiritual gurus are saying it's all in, and the, the, the scientist gurus are saying it's all out. Right? And, then, and, and what I'm saying is like, no, no, it's both. <laughs> you know, really, you guys, it's both. It's happening because if it wasn't both, it won't, it wouldn't function, right? It, it can't even get anywhere. It won't, you need that guy blowing that balloon, <laughs> right? You need to pack information in for information to come out. And that starts to give you an idea of the dynamics of creation, the dynamics of you creating the world. Imagine a fractal universe from finite to, inf you know, from, you know, infinite in all directions. How would you find a center? 
You can't, right? There's no center because there's infinite amount of boundaries. Every point becomes a center in a fractal, right? So, so you imagine you are the center of the universe. Now, I, you know, as long as you remember that everybody else is, you're going to be all right. <laughs> But let's assume that you know, I, I'm not even saying that philosophically. I'm saying like if there's universe embedded into each other to infinity, there is one universe out there that you're the exact center of. I mean, geometrically, okay? And that is a very large universe. I mean, you know, and every one of you is part of that. But they're all different centers. However, so... So, like, to, to first of all, to land that in your consciousness is quite an expensive thought. But when you realize that, is that you're feeding information to the vacuum, and the, and the information is being fed back to you in your experience. And, you know, a lot of people 